What's up guys, it's Techno Viking 23 coming to you today with some Raid Shadow Legends. And today we're going to be catching up a little bit on the main account with our clan boss team. It's been a while since I did one of these videos. Uh, about three or four months ago I started a series on building my speed lead uh, bat eater composition that I do run on my account. Uh, a lot has changed on my account since that started. We have been uh, to the point where we can basically one key nightmare now and also three key ultra nightmare our end goal of course is to try to get that ultra nightmare down to a two key which has been a little bit of a struggle lately and we'll get into that here in just a minute when we go over some of the things going on but uh just to revisit the account a little bit i'm going to jump in first uh and show you guys my great haul which i've been working on a lot over the last couple of months and i want to start here because this is like honestly one of the most important parts of building a clan boss team that a lot of people don't mention um, anytime you're going in to build a clan boss team statistics are going to be super helpful um, in the case of building an unkillable team it's going to be your attack your crit damage your accuracy to land uh, debuffs like poison and things stuff like that's going to play a big role uh, when you're doing damage uh, if you're building kind of more of a traditional clan boss team things like hp defense um, you know resistance and accuracy always is going to help on the clan boss but i think what happens a lot of the times is people will see a video like someone goes in they just put a bunch of gear on champions they throw them in the clan boss and boom they're getting you know 40 50 60 million damage a key and then people are trying to reproduce that and it doesn't work the same way and they they're not really sure why it's not working it may not be because of the champs of the gear but it may be because their great hall simply isn't developed to a point where they can do uh, that same kind of damage, they don't have the, the bonus statistics. Like if you look at, say for example, we've got our void crit damage at 10. That's an extra 25% crit damage we're getting just from that great haul ability. Uh, you go over to the attack percentage. If we got this up to level 10, we'd be getting a 20% bonus to our attack, which can really help bring up those attack numbers and help you do a lot more damage. So very important you're working on your great haul. Uh, if you're struggling in clan boss to do damage, this is one of the first areas you may want to focus on. That's one of the things we've been doing. We've actually been working on getting Void up the most because we do run two man eaters. We run a pain keeper. So we want those man eaters to be uh, having the most attack percentage they can get. We're trying to get them both around 3,500 attack. Uh, we want to get the most out of the crit damage as well for whenever they do um, have a critical attack. And then we've also got Seeker, who's our magic champion uh, in that clan boss comp. So we're trying to get the attack up there and the crit damage as well. He's actually one of our hardest hitters in that clan boss. Uh, especially against the spirit clan boss so we want to try to get these numbers up and then we have mother superior it is the speed lead and even though she is the speed lead there mainly just to help us out with not having to put crazy gear on our champions we also want her to be doing some damage and she does do a pretty good amount of damage right right around where our managers are too so we're also trying to build up attack and crit damage uh, in the spirit and actually since the last video i think i did i got the crit damage to 10 i got the attack to eight on void and we brought magic up to seven and then we brought spirit up to seven on crit damage um during clan vs clan last week i actually had almost close to three thousand gold medals and for some odd reason i decided i would just start building up some other stuff so i've actually in the last week brought everything in my great hall up to three or four and now we kind of have to get back into uh building up uh, we may finish off void or we may go ahead and continue to build up magic since seeker is our big damage dealer but i just wanted to spend a minute in a great hall kind of telling you guys um, how we want to do that there so that you're kind of aware of that when you're trying to build your clan boss team or if your clan boss team is struggling a little bit that's maybe one of the reasons there so uh, let's go ahead and go ahead and we'll go in and check out the composition we use and then i gotta i gotta take a minute and show off my my fancy new champion that i got this week uh, i did get a duchess very very lucky uh, i had saved up about 40 ancient shards and uh, layla managed to pull a duchess for me on stream during the 10x so uh, awesome for my arena defense team i was actually in the process of rebuilding my arena defense team and she just came at the perfect time so also a great clan boss champion since we are talking about the clan boss but let's go ahead and get in here we have our two man eaters here at the very start now the thing that's kind of crazy here is i have not touched the gear on these champions in a while so we're still running like a four star attack banner on our man eater here just mainly because it has the speed uh, i'm not quite sure i think i tried to roll that one to see if it would get anything better uh, but we've been running Fire Knight more than Spider here recently, so I haven't really had a chance to get back into looking 
at getting better accessories because we could upgrade. This is one of the few areas we could upgrade, especially on our fast man eater. He's a little bit more difficult to gear for. So uh, we still have some room to improve those statistics there. Uh, but again, I haven't visited the gear in a long time. This is my first man eater. He's the fast guy. He's at 254. You can see his attack is at 2800. We're trying to get that to 3500. We're trying to get the crit rate to 100 and then trying to stack as much crit damage as we possibly can on him. So that's kind of where we are um, on that. His speed's a little bit lower than the usual bad eater speed because we are running Mother Superior in the lead to make up for that. And that's the whole reason we built this comp three months ago is we didn't really have the gear to build a traditional bad eater. So it's like, hmm, maybe we just throw in a speed lead and bring up those gear requirements so it's a little bit easier to build the team. And that took me from basically struggling on Nightmare to even get the top chest to being able to two key Nightmare and then also move into eventually uh, three key Ultra Nightmare. So it was kind of the main reason we built uh, this team in the first place. So we go over to our second man here. He's in a toxic set, which, you know, again, the gear is not something I've really touched here. And his accessories, you know, if we could get up to a six star attack on either of these, that would probably be great. Uh, if we want to take a look at his statistics here, he's the slow man here. He's at 228. Then again, he's getting that bonus from other superior to bring him up to the proper speed tune he needs to be at. He is at 2900 um attack again we want to get 3500 or higher uh crit rate's only at 80 so that's another area we could improve but again it's just going in and trying to work on the gear is just it's a monumental task once you've got the team running and once it's working so i haven't really revisited that yet i do have a ton of toxic gear where i could probably go in and try to find some better um like crit chance on some of these but you see here we got a 20 speed roll on the helmet we got a 15 speed roll here on the shield so it's kind of hard to go in and replace those pieces uh, but at some point I kind of need to do that. I've just been so focused on building up my arena team lately and working on other areas of the game. Obviously we've had clan versus clan. We've had the fusions going on uh, and then all the new dungeons we just got. So it's been kind of tough to concentrate on a lot of this here. All right, let's go on down here. We have Seeker here, uh, who is the other component of this clan boss team. Again, four star banner on him. We haven't had much of a chance to actually look around. Actually, I may have... No, that's at five we would need a six star speed glyph to put that on there so it looks like we have picked up some gear but i don't really see any oh see again that one now if i roll this to 12 and it does hit speed that may be something we could swap onto him and get him the higher attack number here because if you look at the max attack is 398 on a six star banner and what we have max roll on this is 285 so it would give us a little bit of a boost uh, in the attack department he's actually pretty strong uh, in the attack area he's at 31 39 so he's almost to that 3500 number we're wanting to hit uh crit rate again we want to try to get that closer to 100 percent his speeds at 238 um and again it's just a question of maybe we go in and try to look at some of the gear here and see if there's we can find some crit rate on one of these pieces that we have um but you see here again the speed rolls are pretty high it's it's tough to get those uh we've already got them in crit rate gloves and you know, ideally you would want to get 100% crit rate from your other pieces and then put them in crit damage gloves so you can really max out uh, that crit damage tab. You'll see here, we're kind of just at the mercy of the speed rolls we got um, on this gear at first. So he's also in a toxic set and that's to add, uh, since we don't have any poison in this composition, we kind of need to get that extra damage from somewhere. And those toxic sets on average are worth about 3 million damage a champion just from what I've uh, found. Here we have Painkeeper, and kind of as a rule, I don't touch Painkeeper. I don't do anything to her gear. She is probably the most frustrating champion to gear in the Bad Eater comp, just for me personally, from what I've found. Uh, her masteries and everything as well, she just, it's, it's like if you tweak her HP by 500, it like throws everything off, and if she's not using her A3 when she's supposed to, it can throw off your entire tune. So, um, I've got her to a point where she works. I have uh, people in my clan who run her, and they're, they're um, Compositions, it seems like every time there's an update to the game, it throws something off with her and they have all kinds of issues with their comp, putting it back together. I haven't had any problems, thankfully, knock on wood, but I am not touching her gear at this point. Uh, I'm just kind of letting her sit because she works. And you can see here, uh, we've got 235 speed plus the speed aura again kicking in. Now, we actually do have her at 105% crit rate and 140% crit damage. Her attack defense is, you know, could be higher, but again, her whole thing right now is just to be in this comp to enable it and we're not <laughs> we're not touching anything with her gear so that we make sure we stay like in tune uh the final piece of our composition here is mother superior she is our speed lead 
She has the aura that gives us a 13% ally speed boost. We had been using Battle Sage at first, but the problem with Battle Sage is so much of her kit is kind of redundant uh, in this composition, and her attack up doesn't stack with Seekers, so that was kind of uh, silly, and then she would use her other ability to cleanse or to uh, put the revive on death buff, which she didn't need. Now, if, if when the change comes in where we can control the AI, and if I could just have Battle Sage spamming her A1 the entire time, I may switch back to her and see how that works. But right now, Mother Superior's kit just in general works a lot better. Uh, she actually does a pretty good amount of damage, and her heal actually allows for a lot more counterattacks when we get our HP back, and we're taking those big hits to get those counterattack um, masteries to proc. Uh, actually, I just realized I haven't shown you guys the masteries. I'll go back through and do that here in a second. But her, um, we've got most of her gear in a pretty good spot. We've got six star pretty much everything. Uh, she is at 104 crit rate, 132 crit damage. Uh, attacks at 3,000, so she actually hits pretty hard uh, for being a rare champion in this composition. And just to kind of give you a look at the masteries here, so you can kind of get an idea. I'll go back through the other champions here real quick so you can see kind of where those masteries are on these other guys. We have counterattack mastery pretty much on everyone except for Painkeeper. Now, I know people will run it on Painkeeper, but on her, we actually did go for uh, the support tree. Get a little bit more healing again. I'm trying to proc those counterattacks on my champions that hit harder. But I just found that when I tried to put the counterattack proc or uh, masteries on her, it just threw everything off. The, the tomb would make it 30 some turns and just fall apart because she'd counterattack with the A1 at the wrong time and it would um, mess up the whole tomb because her speed and seeker speed have to be at a certain range in order to get that counterattack to work. So this is what works for me. You may do something different, but like I said, I just tend to leave Pain Keeper alone and just let her do her thing because it, it usually seems to work uh, pretty well there. So that's kind of a, a look again at the composition. And again, my thing is uh, gear is something I need to look at on this team at some point and basically come back to it at some point and revisit it and see if we can't uh, get a little more damage. We've already got our three keys in on Ultra Nightmare. Uh, you can see here. You know, right around 31 million damage today. Now, here's the, the problem on Ultra Nightmare. I've made all these improvements to the Great Hall in terms of the attack and the crit damage numbers. It doesn't really seem to make any difference. Um, now, my best key I've run is about 34 million up. So, you know, we need to be right around 35. You know, just over a little bit over 35 so we can hit that 70.2. And I don't know, like there are some days my key will be 30 million, it'll be 34, it'll be 32, it'll be 33. It just seems like you get this RNG with your War Master procs, especially in your counter attack procs. And it just seems like the perfect storm has to happen in order for you to get that big key. So at this point, we're basically stuck with um, having to max out Great Hall and the statistics we were looking at earlier. Um, going back through and looking at the gear and trying to get the crit damage numbers a lot higher than where they are now because right now they're right around you know 140 and that needs to be well over 200 so we can start hitting that big damage uh, the other thing too is if we can somehow manage to pull a Fushan uh, and stick him in that speed lead he actually does have a decreased defense which would actually be huge because we do not have any debuffs that we're really applying to the clan boss other than attack down which is kind of useless and, and unkillable because you don't really need to worry about it so that's kind of where we are there you know easy three key though every single day so that's that's been great you know the rewards from that have been really really good and that's one of the things you really want to shoot for is getting to that uh point where you can two or three key ultra nightmare every day it's going to make a huge difference on your account you can start getting these sacred shards uh the bigger potions and everything else to start dropping especially the, the epic and legendary books and i do get you know usually one or two legendary books a week sacreds maybe one every two weeks now it seems like I, I was getting them a lot in the beginning but basically every day i'm getting a void or an ancient and that's been one of the reasons i was able to actually pull for duchess is because i had saved up my ancients just from clan boss and dungeons and stuff for a couple weeks and we get quite a few from clan boss now so that's pretty cool it's nice not having to worry about am i gonna have to buy shard packs during this event you know we get quite a few drops from uh, ultra nightmare there so definitely what you want to be shooting for getting to that ultra nightmare level so you can get those rewards so we have not run a key on Nightmare today, I do not believe. Uh, the best key I've hit so far was about 44 million on Nightmare, which is well clear of the 39.1 uh, that we need to hit in order to get the one key there. It is forced today, which is unfortunately our uh, kind of our 
bad composition here because Seeker is our best damage dealer on this team and with him being negative affinity to force, that can uh, stunt our damage a little bit. Usually we can still get a one key. Let's see if we can go ahead and do that today. I'll go ahead and get this set up. Uh, we'll let it run through real quick so you guys can see the run and then we will jump back in with some closing thoughts here. But composition still works pretty much the same. We're just gonna pop Man Eater's A3 to start. Seeker's just gonna go with an A1. And then we're gonna have Painkeeper use the A3 here. Throw an A2 out on the other Man Eater. And Mother Superior should get a pretty big hit here because she is a strong affinity here to the clan boss. Uh, we'll go A2 here on Man Eater. Go ahead and give Seeker his bonus extra turn there. And then we will go ahead and use our A2 on Painkeeper. And we can go ahead and press auto and we can sit back and hopefully get a one key. So uh, I'll go ahead and let this play through and then we will jump back in at the end and get some final thoughts. All right, guys, we're getting down to the wire here. Turn 48, 38.2 right now. They're going to be cutting it close on this run, but this is kind of what happens when we have to hit the Force Affinity boss. Uh, we need about 500,000 damage to get this one key here, and with Seeker being our top damage dealer, being negative affinity here, this is really our toughest boss to hit. Uh, hopefully we can get a couple big shots in here and hit it. Looks like we did just clear it right there. 39.4 we're just gonna get over the hump there so you can see there seeker did 9.9 .9 million damage usually we'll do at least 11 or 12 uh, against the void affinity and then he can even get more than that against the spirit affinity mother superior though kind of came in there 6.5 million and that's why i was kind of saying she's got some sneaky good damage um which is pretty cool her a1 hits pretty hard there both of my man eaters though we got 7.3 9.6 that's pretty solid from both of them so this would have been just a little over 41 million probably if Seeker had been hitting his normal, although we would have lost a little bit of damage there from Mother Superior being strong affinity. So it is what it is. It's still a one key, thankfully. So um, usually we try to hit it when it's void or spirit for sure. That's like our worst boss there was uh, hitting the force boss there. But then 39.45. We'll go ahead and get the ultimate chest there. Uh, sometimes we get the Grandmaster chest on force. 
Honestly, I don't care on Nightmare because if I'm being completely honest with you, the rewards on <laughs> Nightmare Chests are, are pretty bad. They don't ever seem to be anywhere near as good as Ultra Nightmare. So I just kind of like, I like to throw a key in there just to get the extra chest and to help out the clan as well. So there you go. Get another look at the Great Hall in case you missed it at the beginning. Just to kind of, you guys get an idea of where my account is. Uh, but again, it's like, there's a lot of stuff we need to do uh, with this team still. Uh, I probably could build like a more traditional, like higher damage dealing clan boss team, especially now that I do have um, like Duchess. Uh, I've got some other really good clan boss champions here. Um, trying to see where some of the newer ones are. We got a cult brawler, obviously. Uh, I'm trying to think here. I've got Deacon Armstrong, who's one that's popular. We got Sepulchre Sentinel. We're still building up. Uh, let's see here. Who do we get recently? I think we've got Farrakhan. We've got uh, God Secret Neri, who's pretty solid. I've got Farrakhan the Fat here somewhere. I've got Grush. I've got Anax, who's apparently really, really good in the clan boss, but we haven't even had a chance to start working on him. So there's Deacon right there, Deacon Armstrong. So we've got some pretty cool champions that we could use. Uh, Aox, uh, pretty cool in the clan boss too. There's Farrakhan right there. So we definitely could try to do something more traditional that would probably be getting a lot more damage but you know my clan boss team right now is kind of like old reliable it's kind of just it works we get the one key nightmare we get the three key ultra nightmare we get the good rewards every day uh there's still plenty of room to improve it we're using a rare you know mother superior is the lead there obviously we, we have lots of room to improve uh, but right now it's just it's kind of fun and it's kind of creative so it's also one of the other reasons I've kind of stuck with it and I'd really like to see if I can get a, a two key out of it before I totally give up on it uh, whether that means uh, just continuing to build the gear getting a Fushan to drop and building him up uh, to take over that lead position you know I don't know but um, or maybe we even get Battle Sage back in once we can program the AR ourselves and just have her hit that A1 constantly with um, you know being Void we've got the better Great Hall for Void and get that more consistent damage but uh still a very fun comp i like running it it's fun to work with uh, i've got a couple days off this weekend coming up maybe i'll sit down and try to re-gear some of the champions it's just so tough whenever you're trying to gear a clan boss team it's a it's a giant undertaking it takes quite a bit of time and you have to make sure you don't throw off the speed tune and i honestly have not been farming dragon that much to the point where i would have the toxic gear to replace what i am using now i would like to maybe try putting uh fury gear on one of the man eaters just to see if that does anything uh, and i have been farming a lot of fire knight lately as i've been building up my arena team so uh you know there's that there but who knows um like i said we still have plenty of room for improvement uh we're gonna try our best to get a two key ultra nightmare out of this composition at some point before we give up on it and start working on a different composition but we'll see how that goes uh, anyways guys if you have any questions about anything you saw uh, in the video, feel free to leave it down below in the comments and I'll do my best to answer those as soon as I can. As always, I hope you guys are having a great day. Thanks as always for watching and I'll see you again next time.